Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. How's everybody doing out there? What you been doing? Well, let's move forward and you can always email me and put in the chat. You can also subscribe on YouTube or Instagram and on Facebook at Kim Warner on Instagram, Interfaith Wealth Builders 1 on YouTube, Interfaith Wealth Builders. But moving on, you can subscribe and share because we have uplifting content teaching content, how to make yourself better, how to make your life better content, if that's what you're into. We see a lot of information throughout social media that is just driven towards humor and laughter or degrading, but I give content that's going to make you think. And so those are the people that I'm reaching out to. If you know anybody that needs health, healing, mentally, physically, and spiritually, if they've been using substance, share with them so that they can find other remedies of becoming free. So today on Facebook, oftentimes I will post about different situations that come up in my spirit. Intuition. Last week I was posting on lack, going deeper to understand why we feel that we need something but we don't have it when we have everything actually that we need when we resolve lack issues. Lack situations generally come from our childhood, from the past, but once we reconnect with the source, with God, through our religious practices that's been presented to us. And yes, I know that some people will say they didn't have that. You can try it for yourself. You can look at something that's going to help you form a positive religious practice every day that's going to take you into an elevated state of living where you may not have had enough love. But if you find enough love within you daily to say, I love myself, I love myself, you'll find that loving yourself will propel more within you and you will see more coming to you. So here, lack has been a dis- you know a discussion on Facebook. Here I am discussing this week because it's been on my heart, in-laws, um, families that interfere with marriages. Um, it can be on the husband or the wife's side. It's a responsibility that a husband and wife have to them, to their self, their relationship, and to children that they bring in the world to learn how to take courage and get confident enough to speak up for themselves and ask family members to keep their opinions to themselves. You see, when you get married, or even if you're in a position of dating, a woman and a man wants to know that they have a trust in you as an individual to be protected. Maybe your mother and father doesn't like the person that you are suited suited up with or that you've taken on to suit with. This is an individual choice. I know in different cultures, they have different ways, but I'm talking about the American way and only redirecting the American way for the sake of families that have been raised up dysfunctionally. We, because there's been interference in our families, um, us having children and even generational um, thoughts of how things should be. We have interference going on with how a child should be raised and how a marriage should go from people that didn't even have successful marriage and relationships. So one of the topics that I spoke in quoting on you know, Facebook was simply interfering in-laws are not a good thing for relationships because if a man or a woman has more loyalty to his mother and father or his family, his loyalty to his mother, I mean, to his wife will be um, lessened. If a woman has more loyalty to her um, family, her mother and father, then her loyalty to her husband will be less. Sometimes families are sitting too much in ego or their generational issues to understand that person that you bring into the family is worth your time. And then what happens is, is that they make them feel as if they're unworthy. A good movie to watch is Monster-in-Law. You know, she didn't think that 
uh, the young woman that her son was marrying was good enough. This happens, you know, with men and women. So who am I to tell my son that his wife is not good enough? There's many things that I had to learn through life. Um, and one of the things that I'm an avid for is my children growing up and being independent. A lot of times when mothers and fathers interfere and no one is good enough for them, it is a selfish love, but then there's God. And God says that a man or a woman is supposed to cleave to his wife. And I would say a man, but I want this to stay in the man and the woman that's getting married. Understand that you have an order to the universe, to God and the children that you bring into the world that interference from family members, if it's not positive to bring good into the family, meaning good, building up you and your wife, you and your husband, they are not really a productive uh, energy to have in your family. So I'm going to go on and, and read something to you and then call it a day because this is just to encourage you to understand, you know, some of the whys that people have. A lot of people don't understand that a lot of the crimes that we have in the street have to do with family dissemination. Families being um, devised or divided. And it can happen in the home through the parents. It can happen through families. I don't like her or I don't like him. And honestly, who cares if you like them? If it's a relationship between the man and the woman, what matters is if you like them, if you love them, if you if you if you think that the relationship is going to go long term, you going to be with that person. You're not going to allow your family members to bring in interfering situations, conversations, and products. I mean, I go on to say this in the matter of family members that introduce you and friends that introduce you to other people when you're married or when you're dating. You know, when you are in a relationship with someone, it's your relationship. It's not everybody else's. That means that you have to be aware of um, deception. Sometimes you're doing well with your mate and people won't like that. And you allow them to come in and start giving you information and giving you things that's going to bring across between you and your mate. And what happens is, is now, if you think you're lonely now, wait until tonight. Because some people don't want to deal with that. But you didn't take responsibility. We have Christians just talking about they love God. And the Bible tells you to cleave unto your wife. It tells you in Ephesians how to treat your wife like you would treat uh, God. And I say this to the women as well. Christians, you know, they really bear an example of family matters. But in this time, what I find is Christians, they pick and choose what they want to use concerning the word, you know. And so moving on from there, I'm going to read to you a little bit of something and then I'm going to go ahead and let you go. All of what I was talking about today. If you are married men and women, no one should be in your business ear talking about your spouse, whispering. This is deception. If there's a problem, it should be discussed openly. You should be mature, grown enough, filled with confidence and courage to protect your marriage and family from disrespect of outside influences and family interference that does not see or understand what a healthy marriage is and family dynamics, along with any other behaviors that will cause breakage to the relationship. That is if love and long life together is your goal. So you have to always figure out what your goal is. If you just married because someone said, oh, you know, I can't do that until I get married. You need to understand what your goal was to get in that marriage. The other thing is, was your goal to get married, to be a part of your family's acceptance? Was it of uh, your mother and father's acceptance? And I know a lot of people want their mothers and fathers to like their mates, but when it's unhealthy, when your parents have an unhealthy concept of, of marriage and how you should respond to them in your marriage, there's a time to come to the table and begin to discuss, discuss some things. Maybe you the one that came into the world and said, we have to change this. I can't make my husband or, or wife bow down to you. We have, we have to look at 
things in a positive way? How do we get to a healthy um, conversation between mother and daughter-in-law, father and uh, and daughter-in-law, or husband and father-in-law, and husband and mother-in-law? You know, it has to be healthy because some of us have had children with these people and we have those interfering you know someone posted on facebook saying outlaws um and and you want your child to grow up in a healthy way so all of this comes back to the family dynamics when do we change it you know if if the mother and father want to be the king and the queen let them act like the the king and the queen so that the prince and the princess can grow up the generations in a healthy way but when you got toxic king and queen which is mother and fathers combating for uh the spouses to you know make them superior you got another dynamic working so i hope that we're clear but any questions email me at ifwbuilders at gmail.com the other thing is looking at the mental health issues that come up in these type of toxic relationships where you got to please someone else's mother and father and the people that are married are not focused on what's pleasing for them depression anxiety i don't know what to do all of this here the children you know that you bear begin to um feel this uh energy so let's let's do some changing here blessings <laughs>